is Cameron Richardson. I will be your moderator here today at Solano Community College. Here with my members of NSYNC, we will be talking about what we learned in group communication. Here with my members, Victoria, Carissa, Nareda, and Danny. And our first question will be, what is group communication? I feel like group communication is just trying to involve all members of the group that you're in. Because in a one-on-one -on -one conversation, it can be like easier to specify to that one person. But it's like we all have different interests and everything, and we don't want anyone to feel like left out. So it's important to like broaden topics to a way that everyone can join in, and that's just for like social. But I'd say in like, like for us, we, we're in a group to do like our homework, um, and so it's really important to make sure that nobody feels left behind. Um, and just like talking to everybody, seeing how they feel about whatever the work or project is being done. Because um, you want to have everyone be at the same speed. So. Yeah, I mean, it's really about like kind of honing in on, um, you know, like people. Because I feel like there's a lot of, you know, back and forth with our group. Because, you know, like we all kind of, in some way we have like differing interests. But we were united by that single um you know, cause, which is the meditation room. So we kind of just really, I guess in some way we did have like a, a balance between, you know, our differing personalities, but it was like almost like harmonizing in some way. Yeah. But just wondering, like, what did you guys get on the animal test? You know, like, yeah, because I feel like that kind of takes into account the group communication aspect. Because like I got a lion. <laughs> I don't know. I can't remember. Was that in the modules? Yeah. I don't remember. I don't know what I got. <laughs> <laughs> I, felt, I feel left behind. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Me too. I'm like, that was in the modules? The animals? Yeah. I didn't even know. <laughs> I know I took some of those personality ones. But oh, yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. Dang. I'll take it out. <laughs> Um, I feel group communication, it just helps you to like really just bond with each other, but also work with each other. You know, like especially when it comes to like a setting with with a workforce mm -hmm. that actually helps very well because a lot of times people love to be jack butts a lot of times um, so you gotta learn how to deal with that too a lot of times um, yeah. i think the the basis of group communication is like different people coming together as a group to work towards one common goal um or objective basically yeah it's a lot of teamwork mm -hmm. yeah what's one thing what, what's the skills and abilities that helped us in group communication i mean we all kind of have different like varying abilities you know like daniel's kind of into pres presentation stuff like slideshows um i know that victoria is pretty organized and narita is also pretty organized and definitely has like a good I for you know just like things in general like assignments or you know objectives and Cameron's kind of just like jack of all trades because he, he could probably do anything <laughs> <laughs> and then I basically kind of just have like connections but I can also do most things except for run so she, yeah she got the plugs <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> that's a uh, yeah uh, yeah, because when I was actually in this group, I'm like saying, this group is very serious. We are straightforward. So it was like, it helped us to actually like, okay, we got to get to this. Because I know I play around a lot, but yes. we got to get to this. But mm -hmm. also we, boom, boom, we got our roles of what we playing. So that helped that helped us out everything, especially when it came to you. You was, mm -hmm. y'all both, y'all both was organized. So I'm like saying, I'm going to just go with this. It kind of taught me to actually like, okay, you got to be a leader. In order for you to be a leader, you also got to be a student first yeah. in order to be a teacher. So that's why I basically learned in group communication. So I think, uh, yeah, in the beginning of the, when we first got it put into groups, we had to, for an assignment, like split up the work initially. Um, and even though that was like something we were being graded on, like we had to do, I do think it was a really good idea because it kind of let us know what our own goals were and it split up the work evenly so that no one felt like overloaded or anything and even if somebody did have a question on their 
portion of the assignment, then like they could still come to us for help. Uh, so I think like splitting up roles like that was a really good idea because I think if we all just went at the whole assignment just all together, I don't think it would flow as well. I think we yeah. like possibly could clash on that because we all have different ideas. So I think just having our own little sections where we get to work on our own stuff, I think that was a good idea. Yeah, yeah. everyone having their own tasks. Mm -hmm. it was, we could also see each other's um, what it's called. capabilities. Yeah, because like we're utilizing our abilities, right? Because you know, if if we're all kind of really good at something, we have like a forte in something, then we can really push it forward towards the assignment, and then that's when we really, I guess, you know, get into com completion and really seeing it flourish. So that was that was pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> yeah, I think working as a group uh, really allowed us to like. <laughs> look at our strengths and weaknesses. So for example, I saw some skills portrayed in like, for example, you, uh, Daniel and Carissa, you know, you guys have strong leadership skills. That's something that maybe I could work on as well. Um, but I think at the end of the day, I think we all, we were good team players in this group and we contributed contributed um, in a good way. Yeah, because I, I can I can struggle, struggle with leadership. That's why my side probably need at least to be a student first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'm trying to work on it. So. I, from learning from everyone here, um, we played a good role, and we did our we did everything that we can, as far as what, we, what our presentation was on. So I love being with y'all for real because it's actually actually made me like kind of step in my comfort zone, and more so also to learn ideas from other people and like okay I see how she worked on this she was organized in this area so. Yeah, I think like being able to also, that's a good point, like being able to see how you guys worked on stuff mm -hmm. proves that like how the way that I do it isn't the only way and it can give me ideas on how to improve like my own workflow, just my own like life because I have good examples around me. A quote that my dad said, there's so many ways to skin a cat. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. It's, it's something that was like kind of- Skin a cat? Skin a cat or something. I forgot wow. what it was. Wow. Skin. I forgot. I don't think it was Skinny Cat, but oh. the president of the Cat Club is shaking. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, because I might say Skinny Cat over it with something else. Maybe you came up with that. <laughs> Take it, please. <laughs> okay. um, what is very important when it comes to non-verbal communication? Yeah, um, I don't remember what the statistic was exactly, but I remember that nonverbal communication makes up like a definitely majority of communication in general. Um, some people might think that it's just like the words that you say or how you say them. And while those are definitely like important, um, the way that your body is moving like unconsciously can tell you a lot about a person. Um, like some people like, I mean it's different per person, but like if somebody's like slouching that might mean somebody something for that person. Um, or if they're like leaning farther back in their chair, that could give you a signal in something. And the more you learn a person, the more you learn their own cues with nonverbal communication. So when you're first meeting somebody, it can still give you insights, but you don't really know the full story still on um, what those like little movements or ticks might mean. Yeah, it's frustrating because people always tell me I have like bad posture, and I'm like, I have a bad back, you know? So like my self, I guess, presentation is that I'm probably lazy or like, you know, that I'm not engaged in conversation, but it's just like, I have a bad back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially when you kind of trying to stay, like stay still. Like yeah. when I see some, no, my problem, my, my, the funniest part about me is like, when I see somebody with a good posture, I'm like, hold on, yeah. <laughs> let me fix this right now. Hold on, he be like, what are you doing? <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but like that. some of the chairs at the school, like, it's so frustrating. It's so frustrating because so 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 yeah. so why do I gotta? Yeah. I'm like yeah. over here trying to do my computer. I'm like sitting. I'm like all. Why is the? Yeah. Why is it like so yeah. all the way back here? And I'm like. You feel like you're trying to like push out your arch, make your butt look bigger. <laughs> that just don't make no sense to yeah. me. Like so. I have these desks in uh, statistics where you can move the desk this way, you can move the desk this way, and you can also turn it. Mm -hmm. So I cannot get comfortable on that thing because it just like moves all the time and also tall. So it's like, <laughs> yeah. I have to like. Major struggle. Yeah, it's, it's frustrating. 
but whatever. Man, I, I just don't know what to do with these deaths nowadays. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I miss the old school deaths that we used to have back in elementary. This should have been our group project. Let's get fixing the desk. desk. Fixing the desk. Get nap time too. <laughs> yeah, because I mean, honestly though, like there's so many problems with you know like the furniture, and I feel like I mean we present ourselves one way, but the furniture, it's not much better. So, <laughs> what about the furniture? <laughs> you know, because hindering us. Yes, right. Because you know some people, maybe we dress bummy because we want better furniture oh. and our backs hurt. Mine. <laughs> Mine. <laughs> <laughs> Mine. <laughs> These are pretty good chairs, though. These are pretty good. I'm comfortable. Yeah. I, I always dress comfortable because I'm like, I'm like, man, it's like no need for me to, cause I dressed for success when I was mm-hmm. with my dad, and it was a good thing. I felt like I had the shirt tucked yeah. in, like everybody was looking at me like, bro, why you got your shirt tucked in? Like, <laughs> I got my shirt tucked in because I'm ready for success. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they say dress for success. Yes, yeah, but so, also like. I hate running into people, right? And then you look like bummy, and it's it's really sad because it's like, oh my god, they're thinking, wow, what a bum! And in my mind, I didn't think I was gonna see anybody, mm-hmm. so I could dress like bummy at Walmart, and nobody's gonna care, right? Because everybody looks like that. So <laughs> your self your self presentation is just like, okay, yeah, we're all in the same boat here. But you know, when I come to college, I'm scared because if I run into like Vice President Neely or something. I don't want to look like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it'd be like that. Oh yeah, that's it. Yeah. After thinking about that, that goes into our next question. Yeah. <laughs> our next question: What do y'all think about presentation, self presentation mm-hmm. to others? How do others view you on your self presentation? Yeah. A lot of, one thing I would say: a lot of people can't judge people off like how they dress. Yeah. Um, I try my best not to. It can be hard, mm-hmm. but at the same time, it's like okay, maybe they dressing this way because I was in the shoes where I used to dress like I was like from the hood and stuff. Now I'm dressing like I'm a basketball player and I don't even, <laughs> I don't even play for no basketball team. So, um, shout out to Solano Community College. <laughs> so, um, yeah. I think um, no matter how you present yourself and how people interpret it, I think as long as you have a healthy self-concept, that's mm-hmm. all that matters. Mm-hmm. Because your self-presentation is always gonna be up to people's interpretation. Yeah. You know? yeah. So uh, I think maintaining a healthy concept will help you um, be confident when you speak and communicate to others. Yeah, that's a good point. Because like, as long as you're confident and you like how you're presenting yourself, it's really all that matters. And that will show to other people that you are confident in yourself, which is, even though I guess that's not really the presentation aspect, it's still like a big part of it, like being confident in yourself, people will be able to tell, and like regardless of the way you dress. Um, but yeah, like, like you were kind of mentioning, like you used to have your shirt tucked in and everything, and that probably communicated to some people that like, yeah, you meant business or something, or you were... You know, like serious. focused. Or yeah, more yeah, so, serious. more so, more so business. Like, yeah. And I actually love that outfit because it kind of, more so, it kind of fit like certain styles. Because it's just like when it comes to fashion. Yeah. It's basically like I'm like my fashion can be all over the place, but I actually like cer- certain parts of my fashion when it comes to that. Because it's like if I'm like want to wear some casual, or if I want to wear something comfortable, I'm gonna just wear some comfortable. I like, don't feel like getting dressed for this day, so it's like, yeah. Um, yeah. I can't relate because like. For some reason, every time we record, I always bring these LL Cool J hats, <laughs> and like people just make fun of me. They're like, "Oh, why are you wearing the LL Cool J hat?" I'm like, "How do you even know about him?" Mm. <laughs> he hasn't, you know, I don't even know if he's been relevant in like two decades, and we're barely two decades old. So that yeah, crack. that's what I'm saying. So it's like, dang. <laughs> and then also like, I mean, if you would have seen me in middle school, probably like seventh or eighth grade. Um, everybody called me a lesbian stoner, and it honestly, That's I don't crazy. see myself as that anymore. But I guess I kind of gave off that energy because I did hang out around lesbian stoners, mm-hmm. but also I kind of like took over their dressing. So like I wore you know baggy sweatpants and and um, you know my hair was always greasy and stuff. So people also called me a greasy mole rat when I was older so I guess that was kind of because I presented myself like that you know so it kind of just variates for different people you know hopefully nobody thinks I'm a greasy mole rat now 
You right. graduated. I graduated <laughs> Greasy Mole Rat School. No, because what I think about people with like the grease on their hair, I think about the old yeah. school times when they used to have the grease back in the day. Mm-hmm. I just think of that, but it's like, okay, I, I mess with it because my mom had her hair sleek back. And I'm like, look at you back in the day. Look at you, Draco Malfoy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so. I think that's another good point, though. Like yeah. when you were saying you were in middle school, like you were hanging around a bunch of lesbian stoners. Yeah. And that, <laughs> that is a funny demographic, but um, that also is communicating other people yeah. to other people something about you is like the people you are around or just like the things that you enjoy. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, it's not the same per person, but it gives people like a slight hint as to who you are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because um, I remember my dad, uh, when I told my dad the people that I was hanging out with, like one person was like, in a way I can't say, but um, he kind of had to question me up on my um, sexuality, and it was like, what? It kind of threw me off. Like I'm like, what? Yeah. Because I'm hanging out with this particular person, so it was like, it, it, it threw me off. So, but um, overall, like people can have their own type of thoughts and assume a lot of things. That's why. I, that's why I had to learn. So it's like, okay. Uh, next question. Next question is basically. Next question. Drum roll, please. Drum roll, please. Drum roll, please. Drum roll, please. Well, technically, we are. I'm still thinking hard right now. Okay, okay. I'm thinking real hard. How people, like, I guess, like, how people interpret, um, like, certain words. Oh, reactions when it comes to certain words. I know I kind of stalled right there. I I was stalling (laughs) y'all just to make sure y'all don't end up. We ain't gonna talk about that. Uh, Shout out to Salam. <laughs> <laughs> um, when it when it um yeah when it comes to reactions, I know a lot of times we react like different ways. It's like different ways how people react. Like like the black community being called the N word towards like a different race. That is like the biggest reaction that we can ever have because we look at it as, it as history, which we always bring up the slavery times, of course. Um, when it comes to other words, like big words that we don't even know, we like, yeah. what is that? How do you know this? <laughs> so it's like, yeah. Yeah, I remember at like the uh, first couple weeks of class, we had this assignment where we got a bunch of words mm-hmm. on a piece of paper and you were supposed to rank how they made you feel. Yeah, that was funny. It was, yeah, it was kind of funny. I actually left that paper in the student workroom oh. and people like made fun of me for weeks oh. following that. Cause what? They, yeah, because they're like, why did you rate boobs like one? Because oh. I think it was from how good you feel about it to how bad or something. Which one's one? Good or bad? I think one was good and then five was like negative or something. Okay. Yeah, so they were like, why are you raking boobs as one? <laughs> I would say boobs is like really a boob. I feel boobs is like a corny reaction. Yeah. But if you yeah. say like a different type of way of boobs, then it's technically you are. Like, so it's kind of like shocking. Boobs? Huh? Like boobs? Like titties. Like titties. Like if I heard titties. Titties. I didn't want to say it. I would say like a three. Like neutral. Because I'm like, oh, okay, titties. And then, uh, nah, cause when I saw the piece of paper when yeah. he when it when it kind of was blacked out off the end, I'm like, yo, I know y'all yeah. see this. No. I know y'all see this. We just had to use the black marker. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> we was cracking up in a group, and that I'm like, wow. Because, uh, so. like, I mean, if you go to a doctor, right? Mm-hmm. They don't say like, my titties hurt. <laughs> you, could. you could. I have. Oh. You, I mean, yeah, you can also say, like, my breasts are aching or something, <laughs> right? So, like, they would interpret that as, okay, that's interesting. Or, you know, if if you go to, like, I don't know, is it a proctologist or something? Somebody who does, like, the prostate or, you know, butt? I don't know. You could say, like, BBLs. I, BBLs, yeah. I think that's the word, yeah, yeah, BBLs, yeah, BBLs. Yeah, something, I don't know, something like that. You know, it's just the way like they they probably interpret differently, but also I'm sure they hurt worse. So, you know, yeah, it's it a could lot. always be worse. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. I yeah. think it kind of. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, I was just gonna say like the language we use like varies across different contexts. Mm-hmm. Like how we talk to our friends is gonna be a lot different than how we talk to our parents. Oh, definitely. <laughs> so. So yeah. amount of respect when it comes to elders. Yeah, it's like a respect thing. It's also like they grew up in different times and everything. Um, so like com- 
comfortability thing. Yeah. Like, if you're more comfortable with someone, I think you'd be just talking in a certain way or a different way compared to, like, a stranger. Yeah, and it variates between people because, like, I still talk to my parents like friends because, you know, like, I... I mean, we kind of go back and forth. I think it's because I'm the only child. So I guess it kind of just different. It's like different for everybody. Cause like, I'll, you know, just this morning I actually called my dad a bald fatty cause he didn't give me money. Oh. Um, and he laughed and then like threatened to, you know, throw choinies in my face. And for somebody who doesn't know what that is, you would take it like, okay, whatever. Chonies are underwear, so I would take that as okay. He's gonna harass me, <laughs> right? Oh so it just variates by people. Yeah. You know. I thought you said twenties. I was like, that no. kind of I thought he was, I thought, right. I thought, I thought yeah. she said twenties too. I'm like twenties. Preparing me for my future career. Mm. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> when it comes to uh, when it comes to like everybody, everybody has their own slang. Yeah. Like I have my own slang. I talk country, but purposely. I talk country. Purposely. Purposely. It's just Why? it's just because I'm like basically my family. Oh, okay. And my like my mom and my dad. My dad's from Mississippi. My mom's from Louisiana. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like, but technically, I don't even sound like that at all. Like from, it'd be so funny when you hear your own voice on a video. You mm-hmm. like that's how I sound like. Yeah. Like, they be like saying your voice deep. It don't. It's not even that deep. <laughs> They say the same thing about me too. They're like, you know, when you turn in your little LL Cool J hat, I expect you to have like a full grown mustache because you have such a deep voice. And I'm like, damn, okay. I, I see how it is. <laughs> I see how it is. Um, but yeah, I think like comfortability is a good point mm-hmm. because the more comfortable you get to know somebody, the more you can kind of assume how they'll react to certain words. Mm-hmm. And obviously, you're not gonna know every time. You might accidentally say something that might offend somebody. And the best thing you can do is really just like accept that you made a mistake and move on from that and try and grow from that. But people just react differently to certain words and everything. So it's, it's good to learn um, what people in your life react to different. Uh, yeah, because yeah. I mean, I call my friends sometimes like a skid mark. And some of them are like cool with it, you know, and then sometimes they get like visibly offended. And I'm like, damn, I didn't think it was that serious. To be honest, it's like certain people get offended off of certain things. Yeah. So it's like, I'm like saying, like, I'm probably like saying, I really don't get, like, I try my best not to get offended off of certain things. I just be laughing so hard because I'm like saying, like, because. If my brother started, like, roasting me or something like that, he would say something way, like, just yeah. don't even make sense. But if you picture it, you start busting out laughing. I'm like, bro, why did you say that? Speaking of that, like, my dad the other day told me I look like DJ Khaled with hair, like, long hair. And I don't know why, but it stuck with me. Mm-hmm. So, the like, best music. <laughs> <laughs> Another one. <laughs> so now sometimes I just look in the mirror and I see, like, DJ Khaled. And I'm like, another one. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, I guess it's because you're comfortable with them sometimes. I mean, he's the bald one, so <laughs> I'm not DJ Khaled. It, it, it'd be like that with special family. Like, it's like, I can talk to my mom. Mm-hmm. Like, not any type of way, but it's like, we more, we like friends, but she's a mom at the same time. So she would go into mom mode, she would go into a friend mode just to make us feel comfortable enough to actually talk to her. Um, so it, it's, it's like a good thing. And then when it comes to other people, like other people's parents, it's like more so of a respect thing. Mm-hmm. That's supposed to be with parents also. Like, so I respect my mom. Like, I'm not finna cuss at her, none of that. Um, and I respect other people's parents because I don't want to actually, I look towards like more so improve, approval a lot of times. And that can be our worst enemy a lot mm-hmm. of times when it comes to anybody else. But I'm more so like, okay, I, I got respect for you. Like, like, I got respect for your family and you at the same time. So, um, is that it? Well, I think we still need to talk about what a uh, healthy conflict looks like. Oh yeah, healthy um, conflict. Oh, oh snap. Yeah. <laughs> what does healthy conflict look like? I mean, conflict can definitely be healthy. I think some people have mm-hmm. this conception that it's like, this horrible thing that needs to be avoided. And I think that that likely comes from 
how you grew up. Mm -hmm. I like for me, I never really had like great examples of how to constructively deal with an issue you have if somebody's like bothering you. Mm -hmm. So I currently don't really understand how to do that. But with using like some of the things in this class, like owned language, which is like saying like, to my understanding, this is what you're saying. Um, that can really help de-escalate a problem that doesn't really need to be a bigger problem. Because um, not everything needs to be blown out of proportion. You can really get a long way by just communicating how you're feeling, even if it is frustrating. If you have people in your life that care about you, they'll understand and they'll want to get through that with you. So. Yeah, I also, I mean, we are in like the same uh, argument and debate class. So I think in the beginning of the semester, um, Professor Munjin like mentioned that without conflict, like we wouldn't have uh, human development because we would kind of like live in like an echo chamber, which is basically, uh, er I think it's Aristotle or Plato, 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 I don't know. Uh, I love that it's just silent. Yeah, good <laughs> Yeah that you're kind of living in like a box or a cave and everything that you hear is kind of just the only thing that you kind you know it's the only thing going in your mind because you don't have any outside sources telling you otherwise so if you're kind of not having conflict with other people and it's not like bad conflict always but if you don't even disagree with something then i mean you are definitely living in an echo chamber and at that point, you're not exposed to different information or anything. Or opinions. Or, yeah, or opinions, information, anything like that. So you're kind of just like stuck in that little bubble of this is what I believe and this is the only right answer. Yeah, I was exposed to like two sides of like conflict, healthy and unhealthy. So I was able to actually identify like the two things, the two different things. Because uh, unhealthy conflict, y'all basically just arguing. Next thing you know, y'all end up start fighting each other or something, or y'all just cussing each other out. Then y'all walk away just mad at each other. Um, the unhealthy, I mean, the healthy con. I'm sorry, say unhealthy again. <laughs> we ain't gonna talk about that. Another one. But uh, <laughs> health, the healthy conflict is more so y'all trying to work things out, mm -hmm. and then once y'all have the solution, y'all like, okay, I love you. You have a good day. Like, <laughs> like it's more so y'all working things out. Y'all not over here bickering, backering at each other. Y'all none of that. So yeah. it's it's more so y'all working. Y'all working as a team together. Like that helps. That helps out when it comes to dating. Mm -hmm. Like when it comes to friendships. Like because a lot of times I think that's one of our biggest issues when it comes to us as teenagers and us as like adults. Is because of like the lack of communication yeah. and the lack of like trying to actually have a healthy conflict instead of just taking something out of proportion. Because a lot of times people can hear you, but are they listening? Yeah. So. I mean, I don't know if you guys have like any childhood stuff, not like trauma per se, <laughs> but um, solutions for when you would like bicker with, I guess, siblings or cousins. I'm an only child, so I only like had problems with my cousins and they would like shove us in a room or a closet and be like deal with it or you're not coming out oh. and yeah that was probably an episode on Ed Carly <laughs> oh it was it was Sam and her mom yeah, yeah that was us <laughs> <laughs> that was us <laughs> I haven't watched Ed Carly in a while it's been a minute it's I actually I actually love that I actually love that show I learned a lot of life lessons from that show mm. it was very funny yeah so we one on one yeah <laughs> One thing I learned um, that I'm learning is that like in conflict, uh, you focus on the problem and the issue, not the person. Because mm -hmm. then if you're arguing and then you're focusing too much on the other person, you're attacking them, and then it's just not productive at all. It's not yeah. a healthy conversation. You're not attacking their ideologies, you're attacking like them. Mm -hmm. And we've actually seen that kind of in speech and debate, it's especially like probably the debate team, I'm sure. Cause we always get told like attack the ideology or like the message or the opinion but not the person because when you start going to the level of like oh you know you're you're built like an improper fraction instead of like actually addressing the issue because hmm. I've actually been told that an improper fra fraction yeah 
that's like I the agree. biggest insult I've never heard it before. And yeah. it's kind of creative. It is very creative. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm like, that's creative. work in that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that is kind of, yeah, I guess in some way that is, that's unhealthy conflict. Yeah. Because you call me an improper fraction. <laughs> on site. I had to think about a fraction real quick because I'm like, I wasn't good at math, but like. Yeah, and I think um, using like I statements, I think that's really mm -hmm. helpful too because I, I, yeah. if you don't, like I, in the past, I've noticed myself when I'm in like conflict, I say you did this instead of saying I feel this way because, you know, yeah, like reason. You expressing yourself like throughout the time of like when y'all talking and you not blaming that person, you like more so like putting a, you kind of like, okay, I feel this way because of this, mm -hmm. or like, I'm sorry. Like you basically put, it's not basically putting the blame on yourself, but you know that you was in the wrong also, mm -hmm. so. I feel like that can also clear up some like misinterpretations, cause like there have been times that I've been angry and the problem like literally did not even exist. It's just because I was misinterpreting information that I got. Mm -hmm. And so if I were to just state that I feel this specific way, then that can still, like that anger and frustration can still be alleviated while also being a healthy um, conversation. Mm -hmm. I think that I feel is really helpful. It's actually something I use in a relationship. Because um, before, I would do the you thing. Mm -hmm. And then I think we learned about it in class, the I feel. And it helped a lot because you're expressing how you feel instead of placing the blame. And it's, it opens different conversations. Yeah, because saying you is like kind of, it's almost like aggressive. Yeah, it's like, you know. Not insulting, but it feels... Yeah. It feels like targeted, yeah. Because it's like you, you know. You did this to me. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, like, like yo. Oh, like, you say, like, I feel like you did this to me. It's yeah. easy to get like defensive for the yeah. other person. Yeah. I, I I don't like when people blame like other people. Like I just I just can't stand that. I just can't stand that because it's like you did this to me. No, <laughs> you made the decision of what you did. Yeah. Put that on you, fam. Yeah. So it's like. Um, yeah. Like, that's a you problem. <laughs> or, like, that's, I feel like this is a you problem. <laughs> nah, we, we use that a lot. That's, that sounds like a you problem. I'm like, yeah. wow, I'm telling y'all this, y'all ain't gonna, yeah. y'all ain't gonna help me out. Like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, in middle school, I did have a teacher that, like, every time we said something, uh, she would say, like, you have to say before you even give your opinion, I respectfully disagree with blank because I guess that's a way of like diffusing whatever you're gonna say next. Mm -hmm. But I always felt like it was somewhat disingenuous only because I didn't res disrespect, I didn't respectfully disagree. I unrespectfully, disrespectfully. Dis <laughs> I disrespectfully <laughs> disagree with it. Disrespectfully. It's disrespect, you know, like I, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, that is a good way to kind of like give i guess like a good you know introduction before you say some really out of pocket thing it'd be so funny when people we are like saying respectfully respectfully yeah. this and that i'm like it'd be so funny how we use it or like emails it'd be like respectfully blank yeah. and i'm like okay unrespectfully blank mm -hmm. <laughs> you know so i mean that that is also a good way to kind of resolve whatever could happen uh, another thing I learned in the uh, different class, but the argument and debate mm -hmm. class is there's different ways of structuring your arguments. Like, for example, in the way that we learned to like write an argumentative like paper in English or something would be like, in the beginning you state your claim, then you back up your claim, and then uh, like right before your conclusion you're supposed to give that counterclaim, um, and then you conclude your argument. But there's another way of doing it where you actually first list off the counterclaim and give some reasons as to why they might think that. And I really like that way of thinking because it shows your whoever your like opposition is that you understand where they're coming from and that you're not trying to specifically attack them or you're not trying to be like, oh, I'm, I'm right. And even though, well, okay, you are saying that you're right, but you're yeah. not like shoving it in their face. You're mm -hmm. just trying to show them that you understand how they view things and you view things differently 
And I think that mm-hmm. that can be a really healthy way to, like, yeah, kind of like we were talking about, like, diffuse those situations before they blow up. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, something I think we learned, like, just last week in our other communication class, speech and debate, was that when you're kind of giving, like, a, a speech or a debate and you're kind of, you're going against the other person, don't look at them when you say stuff because I guess it's, sometimes it becomes hostile, but also you're trying to, you're trying to persuade the audience and not them because I, I was definitely avoiding eye contact with the <laughs> opponents because I was a little scared. <laughs> they were scared. <laughs> they were a little scared. Very intimidation. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, eye contact's tough. It's like, you don't want to, like, glare at somebody. I think yeah. if it's, like, a one-on-one thing, like, maintaining eye contact mm-hmm. can still definitely be good, but, yeah, you don't want to just be, like, I'm like a... <laughs> sometimes my eyes will just, like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a little scary. Yeah. Um, I don't know. Did we cover everything? I think um, we got all our questions. Yeah. I think so. I think so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah okay. <laughs> All right, thank you, everyone. Um, hope y'all enjoy our podcast here today at Solano Community College with my group in sync with our members, with my members here, with Carissa, Victoria, Nareda, and Danny. And we thank y'all here, y'all moderator, signing off, Cameron Richardson, signing off. Deuces. <laughs>